So this is one of those examples in the protection world that is completely misread and off base to what is actually happening. Big difference between the two. Underneath, same. Hurt you, the same. Going to maul you, absolutely the same. But one is a very high elite value dog. The other one is a low level, bottom of the rung, undisciplined, unskilled, chaotic, crazy minded dog. All right, today's video, I should have done this one a long time ago, <laughs> but it doesn't bother me, but it does need explanation because there's a misunderstanding in the dog world, <laughs> protection dog world we're talking today, of a dog that's in defense drive and a dog that's working in prey drive, okay? Now, I'm not going to go through the differences of the two in this video. The purpose of this video, because we hear this all the time, that when they see our protection dogs working, the comments always are... Awesome. But they're working in prey drive. They're not in real defense drive doing the work. And that is absolutely 100% not true. Okay? So I want to explain that today, the misunderstanding that people in the public and trainers are having when they see our dogs work under control, okay? And I understand why they think this. And I've always thought, where are they coming up with this? Right from looking at the dogs, right? Behind the scenes, these dogs will F you up, right? The dogs that we show in the videos working, the one dog single, two dogs together, honest to God in real life, without equipment on or anything, you are going to get severely effed up, right? By these two when they attack you. Fuck him! Ah! Oh! Ah, oh, fuck! Oh! Out, anybody? Out! Oh! Oh, 
sure. <laughs> I'm sure you do. So it's misleading, right? The trainer's eyes are misleading them to what's truly the dog's working in the fence drive and prey drive, okay? So let me explain here why trainers or the public is seeing it this way. Now, if you know me, obviously, I know the difference between a dog working in defense drive or prey drive, okay? Anytime I build my dogs, it is never going to be the end result that a dog is working in prey drive. We are building real dogs. So the end goal has to be that the dogs are attacking without equipment, they're not equipment oriented. And they are in true mess you up mode. They are going to put it on you. They're not in play drive, prey drive. When they attack you, you are going to get the mauling of your life. Okay. So I just want to put that there that obviously when I'm showing things, I know what they're working in. But let me explain now why there's such a hard time for people thinking one thing when it's truly another thing. Their eyes are deceiving them. So, when you have a dog at the end of a leash, okay? And this is the first difference, okay, that we hear. And I do understand this, and I understand why they think this, okay? So when you see a dog at the end of a leash going crazy, rah, the mind is in chaos. There's no discipline or structure. When the dog is hitting the end of that line, it's a free-for-all. The dog does not have to worry about anything except for being aggressive and trying to reach that person outside of that leash length, okay? 
So the mind is free to get chaotic and go crazy. So you get the spit flying, the teeth, that super aggressive look, ah, right? Where people say, that's a protection dog. That's a dog who's working in real defense drive, right? They're truly aggressive. And I understand why the public or trainers would think this, okay? So yes, the dog at the end of the line, total aggression, psycho, chaos, okay, undisciplined, all right? So the energy's going crazy, the aggression internally, just wanting to kill somebody, okay? I get it, so the look to it looks legit. It looks like real, defensive aggression, real kill you mode, okay? Great. Now, for our dogs, I want none of that. You, Anybody who watches my videos or knows me, I am never going to sell a dog that goes at the end of a leash for all the reasons I've explained in the other videos, the problems with that, the deficiencies of that, chaos, right? People can't handle the dogs. Women can't handle them. Children can't handle them. There's so many problems with a dog who does this. Then when two attackers get involved, it's over. The dog can only defend one, can't defend the other attacker, and it goes on and on with a dog who goes at the end of a leash like that. So for me... It's all about discipline, disciplined aggression. In my system, I have a defensive protection dog system, not an offensive, okay? So offensive is just get him and it's out like this or let go and let the good dog go attack somebody on the offensive, okay? I want the opposite. I want a defensive system, okay? Total control, easy to handle for anybody, man, woman, child, disabled, handicapped, whatever it is, elderly, anybody can handle our dogs in protection, okay? They do not need to be out there like that. No need for that. Now, so when a dog has to hold the leg, or the body in general, in total, keeping itself contained in discipline. The, there is a lot for the dog to be thinking about, okay? So when we turn them on from here and we say, watch, and they start barking at somebody, they are threatening, okay? They are threatening you for real. But it looks less aggressive to the public or trainers in the way they're doing it. But because the mind has to be disciplined, they have to think about the exercise of control. Hold the leg. Okay? Do not leave there unless I tell you to go attack. Or when that person comes in and the threat is getting too close, you're allowed to strike. So there's a lot going on with the dog right now when it's in control. One, he's got to get aggressive, but still be thinking about holding the leg and the body. That's a lot in itself, okay? 
watching the attacker's movements and having to gauge what's close enough, <laughs> where's the line, and they know in a roundabout line, if they get within that line, it's on. They're allowed to spring into action, right? Or am I going to give them a command while they're barking to leave me to go do something? Alyssa, we're going to try something. As he gets around, send him talking as he goes around. Okay? Okay, so all these things are going on in the dog's mind in our system while they are holding that leg. So it looks less aggressive, right? Less defensive, but it's not. They are just as defensive as any dog that's out the end of a leash. It's just controlled holding discipline, holding an exercise, being precise, and waiting for the whole thing to unfold, okay? Looking for details in the game that they have to be very spot on about to avoid consequence, okay? It's very tricky stuff for a dog because they do want to outburst and go crazy, but they have to bark and be aggressive while thinking about all these things that could go on, okay? So it tones down, right, the look of the aggression. So it appears to the outside world that they're in prey drive. They don't look as ferocious as a dog out there. Wah! Undisciplined chaos in the mind. It's whirling internally, just this anger, right? Because they don't have anything to think about. They have no skills. They have nothing but to attack that individual and keep them right there and try to reach them. There's nothing going on in the mind. They have no skills, nothing to worry about. Okay, just total chaos. So that's why it looks so aggressive to people. All right. And our dogs have so many things to think about because these are elite machines. This is the pinnacle of a protection dog, right? This is the absolute ultimate you could get in special forces. <laughs> All right. They will hurt you and bite you just as badly as one of those crazy dogs at the end of a leash, for sure, or else I wouldn't sell them. I wouldn't be using them because that's what I have to have at the end of the game. A dog who's serious, who's going to do it for real, he's going to fight you to the end, equipment, no equipment, whatever it is. But they're so elite in their level of thinking, in understanding the beauty of a very high level, precise defense game, attack game.
Okay. So that is why I understand that comments always, no, the extra drives are great. The dogs are phenomenal, but they're working in play drive. They're not really aggressive. <laughs> and nothing could be further from the truth, right? Your eyes are deceiving you. But I understand why people would think that, okay? So if you were doing protection training, at the levels that we're doing it at, you would know behind the scenes that the dogs that we're using are high caliber killers. Okay. But once we put a, a training system together to tone that down and you are allowed to go and take care of business, either when we let you or the certain scenarios we've taught you in training that you can do it automatically at certain times. Because that mind is so honed in on discipline and skill sets, right? That they're in total focus mode looking at the attacker's movements. Okay, distance wise, that far enough, that getting closer, I have to watch as the dog. Then I'm allowed to attack automatically. Somebody goes to swing. I have to be watching for any movements of aggression that I'm allowed to attack and never let them hit the owner. Okay. What? If the owner's walking backwards, the dog has to follow backwards while holding the leg, keeping itself in discipline, structure, or circling the owner's body, keeping the attackers off. Right, watching them at every second, but while holding the body and never leaving it. So they have to have their mind awareness of where the legs are at every moment, the body, not to let their minds get out of control and leave us and go attack without permission, never leave there. So all of this is going on in their minds, right? But this is why they're so elite. Because we've taught them how to think in severely aggressive states, okay? Because they all have this as their base when they come to us. Now we got to bring it down and get them under control to learn discipline in their aggressive states. So their aggressive states appear less defensive or hostile, aggressive to outsiders because they're thinking about so many things while they're in an aggressive state, okay? And they cannot wait for you to make the wrong move, okay? Trust me that they are fixated, right? Just waiting for you to make the wrong move, to try to get in on the owner so they can, boom, cut it off and mess you up. They are looking forward to an aggressive encounter. They, this is their nature. This is their thing. They thrive on true aggression. So the dogs that I sell or you see on my line, behind the scenes or in, <laughs> an attacker wants to try, right? Thinking they're in a play state, prey state, you will find out quick, right? The difference when they hit you. Now, because of this, you know, some young girl who just started in protection doesn't really know much. We know that was saying, oh, but your dogs are fake. All those exercises you do, fancy, but you could tell they're in prey drive. They're not in real attack drive. They wouldn't really attack somebody, <laughs> right? And again, not understanding the discipline game is making the look of the dogs appear less violent, but it's not that way, okay? So we went outside and we did this one video to show while 
this dog's in control, that when we stand there with no equipment on, we've never done it before with him, he is going to put it on this trainer, one of our decoys, okay? And you see at one point, he gets him, takes the shirt off, gets back on him rawr, with tenacity. This boy is not playing. So true aggression came out of him. Don't need the equipment. That was the first thing this girl had said. Secondly, he's not going to do it for real. Oh, he's going to do it for real. Right? And you can hear in him. And the holding back of the aggression. Okay? So these two dogs that work together. It's that one I just showed you, the male there. And this female, right, when we have done her behind the scenes, you can see the true aggression come out of her. So, but her and that boy together, the ones that do all this together, people who see that, now keeping in mind they're the only two dogs in history that have ever been able to do these exercises and work together like this, only dogs ever on earth that have ever been able to do these exercises. But it takes massive discipline, massive structure, okay? So when you're doing the two dogs together, it's even way more discipline, okay? And trying to control themselves. 
So what are the factors? Well, one has to deal with one attacker and one has to stay with the other one. They cannot gang up on one attacker. They have to stay disciplined. One has to follow one all the time and the other one has to follow the other one all the time. Cannot make a mistake even when the attackers cross each other. They still have to stay with their attacker. While they hold the owner's body and not leave the body, okay, and waiting either for a command from the owner to send them out at them. <laughs> Or wait for the attack. So having to hold the body and two dogs going crazy, which set each other off, right? Winds them up even more internally. But have to hold the body and not come off it and stay tight while they're in aggression internally. Wanting to go attack, but they can't. They have to be disciplined. Then watch their own attacker while they hold the body with aggression going on internally. All these things internally. Okay. The dog is in concentration mode. Right? Where are they going? Where are they going? Where are they going? I got to hold the body. I have to watch too where he goes. Is he going to put an arm in and then come in and attack? Is my owner going to send me to go and attack him? So there's this high concentration going on and a pinpoint from the dogs while they're barking, they're very concentrated. There's a lot going on that they have to pay attention to while they have an aggressive state going on internally. Okay? So they're conflicted. They're torn. They have to stay disciplined and wait for precise things. All right? While they want to let the aggression fly. But it's hard for a dog to let itself out truly in such aggression. When they have so many things that they have to hold together of thinking while they're in an aggressive state. Okay. So this makes it appear to the outsiders watching this 
that they are not fully aggressive or in a defensive state of mind. It's a play state of mind. Very misunderstood. Nothing could be further from the truth. These two dogs are going to mess your world up when they hit you. Okay? It is not going to be pleasant. It is for real. It gets nasty. So this is one of those examples in the protection world that is completely misread and off base to what is actually happening. Okay? So I, I just want that to be understood because that's the truth of what's happening. These dogs are defensive underneath and are in defensive state in their mind and energy. But it's toned down in the way they're doing it, looking like they're playing because they're so concentrated on task and discipline and not letting the chaotic, aggressive state of mind go crazy and have a free for all right? And just go blast off and just become chaotic like a dog who's on the end of a leash, okay? That has no skill, nothing to worry about, no training. It's just madness, all right? That dog has nothing to fear or worry about or think about because he has no skills. So it's just all they have to think about is attack and get close to that person as much as they can or wait for that person to come into their leash zone. Two completely opposite methods, but two exact aggressive states. Just one at the end of a leash looks legit and real aggression and kill you, where the disciplined, elite, skilled, highest level of Assassin special forces looks less aggressive and like it's playing because of all the skills it has on it that it has to focus on while it is in aggression internally. Okay? Big difference between the two. Underneath, same. Hurt you, the same. Gonna maul you. Absolutely the same. But one is a very high elite value dog. The other one is a low level, bottom of the rung, undisciplined, unskilled, chaotic, crazy minded dog. Okay? So that is the difference between the two. And they are the same underneath. And when you get hit by them, it's going to be the same, right? It's just the outward appearance looks different because of what the skilled dogs have to go through in controlling their ugh, real aggressive state because they cannot let it fly like that or they might make mistakes in the exercise. So they have to control it to a degree so that they can focus on all the tasks that they have, have to do in the exercise. Once they go into the aggression, now it's a different thing. One, now they'll outlet it on the person when they attack them, okay? So I just want to... Talk about that because it's very interesting, and I do understand it, so I take no offense to it. I, I don't get mad by it. Oh, you know, these people say this. It's not true. Or, is it annoying? It's annoying, right? But I do understand why the public and trainers would see it as if, oh, that's great. It's cutie stuff. The exercises, the the circling the owners and the backwards walking and the defending the owner and the two dogs. It looks circus stuff. It's really cute stuff. Not realistic. Absolutely realistic. The most realistic it can get. 
but I understand why they don't see it, why they can't see the truth of the what's going on. You have to live at that elite place in dog training, in protection training, to know what you are really seeing. And there's very few of those kind of trainers in life. Okay, so just want to point that out, okay? That that is what's going on and that is the difference, all right? It is not that our dogs are in play mode. Trust me on that. I cannot sell a dog to somebody that is prey-driven or in prey mode, right, in its protection game or else they are useless. Okay, so obviously I know the difference between that and what I need in the end and what I'm going to have in the end that I insist on having at the end game. No choice in that, right? There's no options. They have to be defensive. So that is what I want to talk about today because it is consistent with what we see out there, what we hear people online, social media, right? Saying about, you know, our dogs, which is completely untrue if you understand the elite game. So I'm Richard Hines and I will see you next time.